Hello everybody. In this video, I will be talking about women in coding. And this is an agenda for this video. And first of all, I will be starting why programming is important. Then I will be talking about women in coding. And then we are going to have a workshop session at the end. And we are going to build a chatterbot and it will be your first chatterbot. We'll be developing responsive chatterbot in the workshop session. Let me introduce you myself first. My name is Delek Çelik. I'm a doctor and lecturer at Northumbria University. And in this talk, I will be talking about why coding is important and women in coding by telling you a story of mine. And throughout my talk, I will give you five golden advices. Please uh, try to keep them in your mind because at the end of this video, I will ask you about them. I'm from Kırşehir, which is nearby Ankara, the capital. Since my childhood, I had a passion about computers and it was always so cool to me doing master and PhD abroad. And I received my bachelor's degree in computer science and educational technologies from Ege University in Izmir. And during my bachelor's degree, when I tell to my friends that I will be going to US to do my master and PhD and they were telling me that uh, if I am serious, what I'm going to do US alone and is being teacher at a state high school is not enough. And I told them, yes, this is not enough to me. And there are lots of things that I would like to do. And they were treating me like an alien, you know, and going alone as a young lady and single uh, was a big thing at that, at that time. So actually, it is still a big thing. However, to me, we are born to work. Therefore, we are the citizen of the world and we can go anywhere and we can do anything we like. So my advice number one, you are a world citizen and the countries and the boundaries in our minds are human made and just remove the boundaries from your mind. And after my productive college education in Izmir, I went to US and I had lived in Los Angeles for a year to improve my English language skills. Then I moved to San Francisco uh, to do my master education and I had lived in San Francisco for two years. And as you might know that there is a Silicon Valley, which is a region in the southern part of the San Francisco Bay Area. And Silicon Valley has emerged as a destination of choice for establishing technology companies and Apple, Google, HP, Intel, Adobe, eBay, and many more major technology companies have established their headquarters in Silicon Valley. And they operate from the region with continued business success. Therefore, the San Francisco is the heaven for technology startup companies. And during my San Francisco life, during my master education, I had a chance to join a lot of startup technology events in Silicon Valley and also programming boot camps. And my advice number two is learn about what technology startup company is. So for example, Google was a startup company to search only within the website of the Stanford University and it was a part of the PhD project when it was first programmed. And now it is one of the most famous and most profitable technology giants in the, in the world. So my San Francisco life and joining the events in San Francisco and attending a lot of programming events influenced me a lot to do my PhD in computer science and do more programming stuff. And finally, I have done my PhD in computer science at Burbank College, University of London. And during my PhD, I had a chance to involve in teaching. Uh, I worked in programming classes of Burbank College and also at University College London. And now I'm at the Northumbria University teaching data analytics and programming. Therefore, my dream came true and my Advice number three is, if you can imagine, then you can do it. And programming is very important. Programming language is a set of rules that tells the computer what to perform is through it. And all the applications and software in smartphones and PCs that we are using daily written in coding, right? So for example, think about the social media. Think about Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok. So all these social media platforms have been developed with coding. We can't see it, but there are lots of things going on behind the scene, right? Behind the interfaces. 
And when we search something on Google, it is coding. When we write a Word document, when we take a selfie on our smartphones, when we request a taxi on the Uber, and when we buy something on Amazon, when we watch a movie on Netflix, all this happens with the coding. And so coding is everywhere in our life. My advice number four, learn one programming language even though you are not from this field. Because programming helps you with a lot of ways. For example, first of all, it helps you to develop programming solving skills. Understanding computers and learning the basics of the coding teaches you how software engineers use math in order to solve problems in a logical and creative way. And computer programming gives you a chance to help you develop resilience when you fail and try again and you can learn from your mistakes. Coding gives you the ability to try and try again until you succeed and produce the results that you are looking for. Another point, coding helps you to think differently. And being able to code effectively, a programmer needs to use logical thinking. And you need to be able to see a large problem and break it down into smaller pieces in order to solve it in an effective manner. So this is called composition and which is one of the key features of computational thinking. Learning programming extends your creativity and you will have a chance to design something that is entirely your own. And this is very important, guys. Computer programming is the future. There are lots of opportunities in the programming fields. Uh, with the emergence of the social media and advancement of the information and communication technologies, the world entered a new era, which is called the data era. When we are using the, our phones, our PCs, our tablets every day, and we are making a data, and the companies started to use data and turn this to advantage to the today companies. Therefore, there are lots of new opportunities have arisen. There are increasing number of businesses who rely on computer code, not just those in the technology sector. A person who learns how to code will have the advantage in life with more employment opportunities available to them in the future, no matter which industry they decide to enter, whether it be in the technology sector, finance, retail, or health sector. And this is important reason, guys, why everybody should learn at least one of the programming languages. Another point is that there is a lack of skills in the software industry. And experienced computers are in demand and with the advancement of the technology, there are increasing career opportunities arising every day. And their salary is usually at a high level. If you want to pay it really well, then this is one of the fields that you need to enter. And finally, guys, of course, programming is fun. When I'm doing some programming, actually, I enjoy with it. So I will definitely suggest to be in this field if you have at least some interest. Ada Lovelace is the world's the first computer programming. Yes, the first computer programming was a female, and she was Ada Lovelace. And she was the first person to write a program, a series of comments that Charles Babbage, a mechanical computer, could use uh, to do complicated calculations. And she was 18 when she met with Charles Babbage who was a professor of mathematics at Cambridge University. And she actually involved in his project, which is the analytical engine project, to translate some articles. However, she has done more than that. She also wrote a lot of notes and detailed instruction for how the machine uh, would work. And Ada's note included an algorithm, which is a step-by-step -step -step instruction for using the analytical engine. However, Ada's code never executed, and that machine never built, and her code never executed. And Ada became ill, and she died at the age of 36. For more than 100 years after her death, Ada, Lo Ada Lovelace's notes on analytical engine were forgotten. Around 1950s, her notes were discovered and republished. And this time, people recognized her achievements, and Ada's notes describe what we would now call a computer program. And she understood more than others of her era just what a computer could do. And for this reason, Ada is the world's first computer programmer. In this sector, there are really few female, and people are trying to fill this gender gap by 
organizing several events. And there are lots of organizations supporting the women in coding. So as a female in the sector, you have a lot of chance to find a job. For example, there is a woman who code. This is an open to coders and programmers at any skill level, and they provide a fun and comfortable environment to help women to learn some coding. And there is a network institute. They develop tools and programs designed to help industry, academia, and government recreate, retain, and develop women technology leaders. And there is a she is geeky. And those are a group of women working in a high tech sector in the San Francisco Bay Area, recognized a need for gathering space where women. And there is a sisters, and the sisters is the world's largest email community of technologically women in computing. Sisters broadly promote the interest of women in computing and technology fields. They providing women a private space to seek advice from their peers, discuss the challenges they share as a woman technologist. And there is another one, Tech Innovation, and this is the world's largest and longest running technology competition for girls in middle school, high school, and university. And their mobile app design and entrepreneurship program inspires girls to pursue STEM uh, careers. There are a lot of organizations supporting women to be in this field, guys. My advice number five if you want to learn programming, the best time to learn is right now. Now we are going to have a workshop session. We are going to build a chatterbot. Uh, it's a robot can reply to your messages in a seemingly in an intelligent way and will be using Python language to develop this chatterbot and will be using the printing, the user input variables, if statements, while loops to develop this uh, chatterbot called Eliza. And we need to go to this web page. Let's go and do it. This is a web page that will be developing our Eliza, the chatterbot. This is the interface of it. You can read this if you would like to learn more about it. Then we can move to the next step from here. The first thing that we need to do is to teach Eliza to send us a message. And computers call this printing. To send a message to outside, we use printing. For example, we have a print function here. We call this function. Let me delete this part. So this is how we use it. And when you type anything here inside the quotes, it will be showing it to the users. So hello world, let's write hello world. Then we can run the code from here. Okay, as you can see, it is writing hello world. Let's move from here. So in this section, it tells us to write a program that prints out, hello, my name is Eliza. And to do that, we need to write print here, parenthesis, and then we need to type this inside this and inside the codes. We can execute our code clicking on the run button here at the right top of the screen. Okay, now it is working. And let's move. So now Eliza can message us. How do we message her back? And computers can read a message from us using the command input. And let's go and run this code and see how it will work. My name is Eliza. What is your name? So as you can see, there is an input here presented here. And I need to type my name. So when I type my name, it tells me that hello there. OK, that's good. It is uh, starting being responsive. Let's continue. Eliza doesn't seem friendly, and she's not even using my name, right? So, and to do that, I need to, I can describe a variable here, and I can call this name. When the user insert a name, and I can hold it with this variable, and then at the end, I can print it here. Let me run this. So when I type the leg here, as you can see, it will be more personalized. So hello, Delek, nice to meet you. That's good. Let's move. Write a program in which Eliza asks that what your favorite movie is, then compliments you on an excellent taste. So first of all, Eliza needs to write this statement, right? Let me copy this and paste it here. And then the user needs to enter input let me call this movie i would like to define a variable and i would like to hold the input of the user 
and then I need to print again I will copy this stuff from here and I will break it here guys with a comma because I would like to enter movie here because I would like to return the input that the user will be entering right so let's go and run this what is your favorite movie and I will call this let me type the holiday and press enter great I love the holiday too as you can see the Elisa becomes more friendly right more personalized let's move in the section we will be extending our program adding some more print and input statements basically we will be asking the users their name and then we are going to ask him or her how they feel right let's run this and let's see how it will work let me call this let me insert my name Dilek. how are you feeling today i'm fine that's good so it becomes more interactive the issue that you are going to realize here is that if i said bad it was going to tell me the same thing that's good which is not good right so we need to change this and to make it the elisa needs to give decisions when there are several possibilities we use if and else blocks and basically to to help the system decide which one to pick so let's look at this example it will be printing how are you feeling today and feeling will be hold with this feeling variable and if the feeling if this one equals to good if the user enters good and it is going to print that's good in other conditions it will print i'm sorry you feel like that let's run this i will say okay how are you feeling today i'm feeling bad i'm sorry you feel like that okay this is something good right uh, and of course there are lots of possibilities right there is not just good and bad the user could enter some other things as well you need to consider every possibilities that the user might enter so in this section it, it extends it uh, with more stuff so that's it guys i will stop this lecture here and you can go and continue and finish all this practice by yourself this is the end of this video guys thanks for watching my video if you like and go and please like my videos and also do subscribe to my channel Thanks for watching and take care and see you guys. Bye-bye.